Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a problem that contains A plus PI, the name of this channel. Yay! We have sine of A plus PI equals zero and we're going to be solving for A and B values. Can we solve for two variables in this case? Let's go ahead and find out. Now this problem was actually inspired by comments to a video that I made recently, I think it was about a week ago, maybe seven, eight days ago. And this was the problem, e to the iz equals cosine z, which is, I think, a really nice problem. We could call this a homemade problem because I kind of came up with the idea, but that's no big deal. And this was part of the comment, and we'll talk about that, okay? So we have this equation, e to the iz cosine z, and then it kind of turns into this, and we're going to go ahead and explore. So, we have the following. Sine of A plus BI equals zero. Can we just keep it simple, call this theta, because substitution is awesome, right? And sine theta equals zero basically implies that theta is zero, right? And I can definitely add multiples of pi to it, because zero and then pi sine pi is also zero, right? So on and so forth. But what if theta is complex? If theta is real, then we're good, but a plus bi can be complex. I mean, it is complex, even if it's real, right? So, can we just safely say that this is gonna be true when a plus bi is zero? Let's find out. So we're gonna let z equal to a plus bi. By the way, uh, before we get into the depth, uh, I just want to say a couple words. When you have something like sine of a plus bi, you can think about the formula for the sum of two angles, right? The sum formula. So let's talk about that briefly and then we'll get into this. So what is sine alpha plus beta? You remember that formula? It is sine alpha cosine beta plus, remember the plus plus uh, relationship, sine beta cosine alpha. And this is kind of like a heterogeneous relationship where the sines and cosines are mixed as opposed to cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Hopefully you know the pattern. Anyways, those are easy to memorize, hopefully. But what if I replace alpha with A and beta with BI? Let's plug it in. Sine of A plus BI is gonna equal sine of A cosine of bi plus sine of bi times cosine of a. I hope you don't mind when I don't use parentheses. I hope this is understood. If it's not, then I'll use parentheses. Okay, cool. And also you can use them here too. No big deal. I don't like using them, but you can. So what is that supposed to mean? This is zero, right? Okay, cool. If this is zero, notice that how do you write cosine of bi? What does cosine of bi mean, right? Well, cosine of bi might come up in a scenario like this. We may have something like cosine of z plus i sine z, or maybe I should use theta, I don't know. And this from Euler's formula, this can be written as e to the i theta, right? So cosine of bi, if theta is bi, then we can have cosine of bi plus i sine of bi, let's use parentheses again to be consistent, equals e to the power i times bi. Hmm. That is i times bi is bi squared, which is negative b. Great, so that's what cosine bi gives us. What happens if we replace theta with negative bi? Then we get cosine bi minus i sine bi equals, wait a minute, we replace b with theta with negative bi, but cosine is even, so it didn't change, but sine had to change. So if you replace uh, that, you're going to get e to the b. And then by adding this and dividing by 2, you can get cosine of bi from here, right? They'll cancel out. And then you can get a value for that. You can plug it in here. And then something for sine bi you can find similarly, plug it in there and see what you can find from there. But this is kind of complicated. Let's 
keep it simple. And obviously we're going to be using the same idea, but with an identity or formula that you should, I think, memorize. So here's how it goes. Sine of z, again, by using Euler's formula, can be written as e to the iz minus e to the negative iz divided by 2i. Okay, so far so good. And again, this comes from the fact that cosine z plus i sine z is equal to e to the iz and replace z with negative z and you'll get something else and put it together. Okay, now this is sine z and this is true even when z is not real. And now we're going to do the following. We replace z with a plus bi. Let's do it, right? When we do, we get sine of a plus bi equals e to the power i times a plus bi minus e to the power negative i times a plus bi divided by 2i. And we want this to be 0. Awesome. So that means the numerator is supposed to be 0. And let's go ahead and distribute the exponents. This gives us e to the power a, a i plus b i squared, which is negative b plus a i minus e to the power b minus a i. So these two are opposites, and we're going to set it equal to 0. Since the exponents are opposite, it's kind of like e to the power t minus e to the power negative t. We can write this as a reciprocal, right? So let's go ahead and write it as e to the power negative b plus a i equals e to the power b minus a i, which can be written as 1 over e to the power negative b plus a i. You see the relationship? These two are the same thing. Cross multiply, you're going to get e to the power this plus that, which is same thing twice, negative 2b or not 2b. Allow me to make that joke real quick. Plus 2ai equals 1. Awesome. We got to a really interesting point, right? Well, does that mean this is 0? Well, you can think about it that way. Yes, if you set it equal to 0, then you could hopefully go from there. Like what happens if negative 2b plus 2ai is 0? That means 2b equals 2ai. And then 2's cancel out and b is a i. Is that what it means or something else? Anyways, let's not worry about it. Let's do it a little differently. Now I'm going to go ahead and write this as e to the power 2 pi and i. Awesome. Now why did I do that? Because that's how you can write 1 in the complex word. In other words, we complexified 1 and write it as or wrote it as an exponential. So far so good. Let's go ahead and set the exponents equal to each other. Since we consider all the integer values here, we don't really need to add another 2 pi and i because that's the period. We are good. Negative 2b plus 2ai equals 2 pi and i. Obviously, we can go ahead and divide everything by 2 or just think about it this way. We have a complex number on the left and a complex number on the right. When are two complex numbers equal? When the real parts are equal, and the same thing goes for complex. I mean the imaginary parts, I meant. So from here, there is no real part on the right-hand side, so negative 2b must be 0, and 2a must be 2 pi n. Makes sense? The i cancels out, obviously. So we get 2a equals 2 pi n, a becomes pi n, and b becomes 0. So the number that satisfies this is just going to be sine of a plus b i is 0 if a plus b i is pi n or a multiple of pi. All right. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.